Hey there, I'm Rose, and I am getting my doctorate in midwifery, and I will be an NP midwife in little less than a year. Traditionally, midwives help people through their childbearing years during the reproductive phases of life and we're there for the childbirth and we also help with pre and postpartum. So my dream as a midwife is to expand the scope of reproductive health and wellness to be more inclusive of all genders, sexualities, ethnicities, races, and I want to create more diversity. And I understand that there is way more of a need in the reproductive health space that is beyond my current scope right now. But I am open to feedback and also learning more. As a white cis passing student, I realize receiving this education, I realize that I have privilege and it is a privilege for me to have a dream like this. And I also see it as an opportunity for change. So I'm so happy you're here and thank you for being here. Now, without further ado, I am starting a mini series called Get Real with Rose, where I debunk your healthcare myths, misconceptions, and answer all your reproductive health questions. So I received a question off my first video last week, and I'm going to be answering them this week in three short videos. So let's start with the question. The question was, Hey Rose, thanks so much for creating a YouTube channel that discusses topics that are not usually talked about. What misconceptions about non-binary and transgender folks do you wish to clear up within the healthcare scope in your YouTube channel? I love this first question. So the first misconception I would like to debunk is that non-binary and transgender people do not deserve to be seen in their healthcare. And I would like to come on here and say that non-binary and transgender folks do deserve to be seen in their healthcare. They deserve to be seen and met with compassion and safety just like every single other patient. A way a provider can do that is by asking name, gender, and pronouns at the beginning of the visit and then trying their best to maintain the patient's identity throughout the rest of the visit. Another way is that the provider can ask the patient which anatomical terms they would like the provider to use when referencing their anatomy. So for example, if a patient is coming in for a breast chest exam and they identify as non-binary, the provider can ask the patient, would you like me to refer to your anatomy as breast or chest throughout this exam? Yeah, it can be kind of fun. So in the end, it's about the patient and not the provider. And as providers, we are pillars of safety and compassion for our patients and can do so in little ways. As for the patient, they can ensure that their name, gender, and pronouns are correctly identified in their physical chart. Now, I know that can feel overwhelming or complicated or hard sometimes. However, it is one way that you can advocate for yourself. And if none of those things make it into the chart, you can advocate yourself, advocate for yourself during the visit in the physical exam room. All right, that was the first myth I debunked. Follow, follow along for the rest. 